good morning all of you class is third class we discuss about the basics on power systems so today we are discussing about transmission and power power transmission line power power lines performance of any electrical device or any human being also performance is based on output based on output only we can say the person is good or bad similarly the performance of any mission or any device also based on output we can define here in transmission line any electrical output is output energy is electrical energy that's why performance we define with the electrical terms and here performance we define with the efficiency efficiency and the voltage regulation efficiency and the voltage regulation efficiency and the regulation now efficiency we can define with the two performance defense again class wise those are first one power efficiency and energy efficiency energy efficiency this energy efficiency we defines for distribution transformer distribution transformer and regulation the regulations are of two types we define regulations in the two cases first one static regulation static regulation is also called voltage regulation static regulation or voltage regulation another is dynamic regulation dynamic or speed regulation speed regulation dynamic or speed regulation voltage regulation we use when to the devices which are giving output power as electrical energy output power is electrical energy electrical energy what devices are giving out the electrical energy generator transformer and the transmission lines of course transformer you are giving electrical energy as input input and the output also you are getting electrical energy and transmission lines so we are giving input electrical but output what output you are getting electrical energy are getting output so to define voltage regulation for these devices we use voltage regulation and this dynamic regulation or speed energy we use for the devices which are giving mechanical energy as output mechanical energy as output example for motors synchronous motor induction motor etc now efficiency we define efficiency is nothing but the ratio of output power to the input power for transmission lines efficiency we define with the receiving end power output is nothing but receiving end power to the sending end power sending end power so if to define efficiency simple we use formula now to calculate voltage regulation so definition for voltage regulation in transmission lines is voltage regulation voltage regulation it is the magnitude difference it is the magnitude difference of it is the magnitude difference of no load no load and full load no load and full load receiving end voltages receiving end voltages no load and full load receiving end voltages as a ratio of as a ratio of full load full load receiving end voltage full load receiving end voltage if i define transmission line network we will get like this transmission line. i am defining so transmission line 
and here in transmission line. Sure. I am going to give it here input supply Vs. Yeah, is sending in voltage. If you give us voltage source, if there is a power path, current will go, that we can count as I S. I am going to provide one switch here. One switch here. Load I am going to connect to here. The existing voltage at load is called receiving end voltage. The current flowing to the load is called receiving end current, load current. Now if I connect a switch, if a switch is opened, here the voltage exist is called no load receiving end voltage. And if you connect a load, you will get the voltage here. So because of this line drop, voltage drop, voltage varies at the load. So this voltage is called no load voltage. This VR is called load voltage. I am going to assume here, VR is a full load voltage. Now according to definition, how are we going to define voltage regulation? Voltage regulation is equal to voltage regulation is equal to receiving in no load voltage. I am going to define it with V R naught. I said here the magnitude difference. That's why I am going to define it with the modulus minus V R divided by V R divided by V R. See the difference of voltage units are volts. Denominator also holds. That's why voltage regulation there is no unit. That's why this voltage regulation is also called per unit voltage regulation. Per unit voltage regulation. If you want in terms of percentage into 100. into hundred per unit percentage voltage regulation. And these IR and VR are called receiving end side parameters. Receiving end side. And Vs and Is are called sending inside parameters. Sending inside parameters. Sending inside parameters. So that is we define voltage regulation. Now, as we discussed already, transmission lines are classified based on magnitude of voltage, frequency, and length are of three types. Come to classification of transmission lines elaborately. Transmission of transmission lines. As we discussed in last class, based on length of the line, magnitude of voltage, and frequency, transmission lines are classified into three types. First one, short transmission line, short length. Transmission lines. Here we neglect the capacitance. Especially capacitance we neglect right? because we are going to assume length is very less. If length is very less means our capacitors are connected in parallel. So very less magnitude will exist. That's why we neglect capacitance. What I said, this length line short transmission line is also called RL lumped network. RL lumped network. R lumped network. So let's start the connect, uh, inductors are connected in series. So transmission line. If we define so lumped model R of R network is also called short transmission line. The systems right. inductors. Yeah. Support this as I am writing, for the support of uh, VS, sending in voltage, as at this current frame is called the receiving in voltage, sending in current, the voltage is at the load is called receiving in voltage, current flow is called receiving in current, receiving in current, so capacitance will not be the total length of the line, length of the line is L, kilometers, length of the line is kilometers. Come to second classification, medium transmission lines. Medium transmission lines. Elaborate we will discuss in first, later we will discuss in the third. Now, so medium transmission lines. Again, these are classified into four types based on, based on 
placement of place on placement of shunt capacitance then is the placement of shunt capacitance medium transmission lines are classified into four types medium transmission lines are classified into four types those are first one sending end sending end capacitor in this medium transmission lines we are going to assume capacitance value is of by because the length is more compared to short transmission so the capacitance value is appreciable capacitance value is appreciable that's why this transmission line we can define with rlc lumped network rlc lumped network rlc lumped network sending in capacitor At sending inside, I'm going to draw a capacitor. Let's draw a resistor model. We get the network. Let's see lamp board model. VR, VS, LS, VR. Board is connected. Similarly, receiving in capacitance model. Means if you place the capacitance at receiving end side, it's called the receiving end capacitance model. Receiving end capacitor model. This model is also called load end capacitor model. Load end capacitor. is also called end condenser method end condenser method now if i repeat this a lumped rlc model or receiving end set where the connecting capacitor is in set where the connecting capacitor r c v r receiving capacitor such a third class station very important nominal t method nominal t model nominal t model and in this, this model is designed this model is designed with by providing half length half length receiving end condenser model or end condenser model half length end condenser model and the remaining half length remaining half length sending in capacitor model sending in capacitor model sending in capacitor model which is right now half i'm going to take receiving end model half length test is r by 2 L by two capacitance C by two. Next step, remaining C by two. C by two. Remaining half one point connecting sending in more. Sending in capacitor more. R by two L by two capacitance. R by two L by two. So voltage is called sending in voltage. Sending in current. Sending in voltage. Sending in current. R by two L by two. See but half of the capacitance is good. The sum of this connected with the other ones total capacitance is C by two. Total capacitance C C by two C by two. The capacitors are connected in C parallel. The total sum is addition. Capacitance. This is called nominal T model. Now fourth classification. Of the classification, or nominal T model, nominal pi model, 
this nominal pi model will exist. This nominal pi model will exist if we connect half length L by 2 length sending end model, sending end capacitor model, sending end capacitor model, and half length receiving end capacitor, just reverse to nominal, receiving end capacitor model, just reverse to nominal T. If we connect like this, we get RLC of the model and this system. Sending in capacitance first half length, next half length receiving in capacitance. Receiving in means
a special analysis we are going to do totally on nominal pi methods. Right? Now, with this knowledge, so let us assume a transmission time with the nominal pi. So, nominal total analysis is nominal pi or short transmission time. Nominal pi or short transmission time. Analysis of transmission lines we are going to be with two cases. Analysis is going to be with two cases. Analysis of transmission lines. One is steady state analysis. Steady state analysis. And second, transient analysis. Transient analysis, steady state and transient analysis. Network understanding means that normal condition, the analysis is called steady state analysis. In this analysis, the total network will be represented mostly in RLC Lumpur model. RLC Lumpur model. So, example is load flow model. The total load flow analysis we are going to study. Later we are going to study about load flow analysis, total analysis on steady state condition. Now what is transient state? At switching conditions, means network is not under, not under st uh, stable conditions, means unstable conditions, the analysis of the network is called transient analysis. To understand, we can take example fan. If you switch on the fan, fan is start slowly increasing the speed. That is called as transient state. Whenever uh, after some time fan introduced to constant speed, that condition is called steady state condition. The example steady state uh, transient uh, in this transient analysis, the network will be the network will be RLC distributed model. Distributed network. Distributed network. Means in this the analysis will be <coughs> exact transmission line. Exact transmission line means you can get here in transmission exact values, but in steady state you won't get exact values. You won't get exact values. Right? Examples for transient analysis is switching transients. Switching transients. We are going to study about all these transients in power system subject, not in power system. Okay. So analysis, steady state analysis and transient analysis. Now come to model definition, model uh, model representation of transmission. What I studied in the um, in uh, transmission lines, the transmission lines analysis we are going to do we are doing on nominal pi or short transmission lines. But if I take any transmission line. Nominal pi method here, R L sending in capacitor, issuing in set capacitor. So this is called a two port network. What I said net port is nothing but the payload terminals is called port. If I connected any source here, any source, DC source, AC source, whatever the current will flow through this node, the same amount of current has to come. Then we can connect these two, the pair of two terminals in the port. Similar here also, if you connect any one source, whatever the current will flow, same current will come to this node. So I can call this also a port. The pair of two ports is called two port network. So transmission line, I can call it as a two port network. Here, how many number of variables will exist in uh, variables will exist in two port network? If I connect any one source, say so I V1. Because of that, current will be five. These two are called variables. And similarly, if I connect any one source, say V2. Because of this, the current flows V2. So same amount of current will come to negative term on the source. So the, now here V1, I1, V2 and V2 and I2. These are called variables. These are called variables. 
Now in these variables, in these variables, in these variables, if you take in any two as dependent, say so I am going to assume here V1, I1, oh, V1, V2, I am going to take as a dependent. And, uh, and remaining are I1, I2, I am going to take as independent. In this case, the existed parameters are called Z parameters, are deducted. And similarly, if I took I1, I2 as a dependent for any equation, by taking I1, I2 as dependent, and V1, V2 as independent, then the existed parameters are called Y parameters. Similarly, if I took V1, I1 as a dependent, V2, I2 as independent, the existed parameters are called transmission parameters. Or T parameters. If I took V2, I2 as a referent, uh, dependent, V1, I1 as independent, the existed parameters are called inverse transmission or G parameters. And similarly, if I took V1 and I2 as dependent, V2 and I1 as independent, the existed parameters are called transistor parameters. Transistor parameters. Just opposite V2 I1 and V1 I2 are called inverse transistor parameters. Inverse T these are called inverse T parameters, these are G parameters. G parameters. Now if you see here input we are going to considering as dependent, output we are going to considering as independent. Why? Because here yeah. receiving end voltage are called independent. Yeah. Receiving end voltage, receiving currents are called independent. V1 and I1 are called as dependent. Why? Because depends on load, depends on load variations. Because for the transmission line, so many loads are connected. So loads will vary frequently. So because of variation of load, no doubt V2 and I2 will vary. Or okay. can consider this as V R. Receiving in voltage, receiving in current. Various. Because of variation of these two, no doubt, source voltage. Sending inside voltage and so on. Means by knowing these terms, by knowing these terms, we have to calculate these terms. So for this, we are going to need nominal T and nominal current. So by using receiving in voltage and receiving current, so we are going to calculating sending in sending in voltage and sending in currents. That's why the methods we are going to call those as nominal, nominal methods. Why we are going to use nominal term because of this reason. So these are called known parameters. These are called known parameters. No. These are unknown parameters. Uh, here the send power sending from the source is called yes, sending end active power and here uh, Power sending we are going to calculate the reactive power why? because transmission line will transfer both sending both reactive power and active power. We discussed already what is reactive power and what is active power. Similarly, load also receives active power PR and reactive power QR receiving in powers. So these terms are called of receiving in terms. Receiving in terms. These are called sending in terms. Now, by using, by using Kirchhoff's laws, by using Kirchhoff's laws, by using Kirchhoff's laws, if written in the, this V1 in terms of V1 V1, if you apply KVN, you can get, okay, receiving in voltage is a function of, function of, sending in voltage is a function of, receiving in voltage and then receiving in current. This is also a function of function of receiving in voltage and receiving in current. So these two are called linear equations. If you get an equation, the equations are called linear equations. Since KVL and KCL are KVL and KCL are linear. KVL and KCL are linear. Why? Because to the linear terms only we are going to define KVL and KCL. So, 
constants are this. If you return equations by using Kirchhoff's laws, scale and KCL, the existed constants, the existed constants in above two functions or uh, equations, two above two functions are called are called transmission line parameters. Transmission line parameters also called generalized generalized circuit parameters generalized circuit parameters also called A B C D parameters A B C D parameters A B C D the existed constants are called generalized circuit element, circuit constants, or ABCD constants, or transmission line parameters. Transmission line parameters. Okay. Now, with this knowledge, we have to define ABCD parameters for general circuit parameters for any transmission line. Any transmission line. If I took a transmission line, now transmission lines, I am going to define them in A, B, C, D or uh, general circuit parameters because the reasons are there. For every circuit, for every transmission line, if you know...